Oh, it's good to see everybody here today. It is a good day today. Um, you no, know, it's, it's actually, it's not too cold, not too warm. You know, enjoy the day. I don't know what tomorrow is. Um, yeah, I'm so glad to see and glad to see everybody. If you're watching us online, I just want to say, uh, come in person. So much better being together with our brothers and sisters. So I'm just going to encourage you, if you are, you know, worried about getting out or if you just think, you know, maybe I'll stay home, just move on and come on in. Everybody's welcome. It's really good. Man, y'all sound good today too. Thanks, Jeff, for, for uh, singing such good songs that I know. Appreciate that. We are, um, we're in the middle of a basic series. We're talking about some of those things that are basic to our faith. And we've talked about Jesus. We've talked about scripture. And today we're going to talk about why we sing. Now, there's so much I'd love to say about this, but I'm going to try to, you know, narrow myself down a little bit. Uh, I've grown up in a singing family. You know, um, I've grown up basically born in church, practically grown up, surrounded by so many different types of singing and singers my dad was in like this quartet band you know for a, way back in the 70s I'm going to show you a picture um, he's there on the right you know with a mustache he looks like Burt Reynolds it's kind of cool um, I remember traveling with them we went down to South Texas I think it was McAllen you know and I just remember those moments and you know I grew up singing I grew up uh, I sang it in church when I was three years old and and I remember singing in quartets and ensembles and and choir singing you know I have a minor in music and I just love singing uh, it's kind of in my blood it's also in Jeff's blood you know in fact here's a picture of Jeff when he was just really little singing <laughs> he's he's the one on the right just to let you know um, you're welcome Jeff you can thank your wife for that sweet picture I'll just leave it up there for just another couple of <laughs> I love that what I love is that, you know, with a lot of people in this room and with, with Jeff, I sing's in our blood. You know, we love it. In fact, in Psalms, uh, I resonate with this. Psalm 104, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. I resonate with that. My hope is today as we kind of you know, listen and participate in what we're doing from here until the end of the service, my hope is that at the end of today, you will leave with a little deeper understanding about why singing is basic to our faith. Let's pray as we begin. Heavenly Father, we lift up our voices to you today. Lord, this is an offering that we give each Sunday. I pray that you would help us to, to give our attention equally this morning. Help us to hear and I pray that you would help your word to resonate in our hearts and in our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. So music is all around us. It's, it's woven into the fabric of our culture and our society. If, if uh, you know, you were watching TV or, and there was no music at all, it would just be a little odd. You know, music is really part of who we are. When, it, when it's good, it moves us. When it's bad, it annoys us. When it's really bad and really repetitive, like, you know, it's a small world after all. Have you heard that song? I'm just going to let you think about it so it stays in your head all day. Um, for some people, I was talking to someone here a little while ago, they said that that song actually made their son nauseous and he you know, was heaving because he couldn't, they, were, they got stuck on the ride and he could not handle it anymore. I mean, when it's really bad, it, it does something to us physically, doesn't it? It moves us, it evokes emotions, it triggers memory. It's deeply embedded in us. So I did some research. Okay, so how many songs do you think were released in our, let's just say the world, in 2022? Okay, so just give you a little perspective. In 1960s, in that decade, in the 60s, uh, there was probably an average of around 5,000 albums released every year. So whether that's, you know, a single like they used to do a whole lot of, or if it's an anthology of eight to ten uh, songs, we're talking about 5,000 to 50,000 songs were released every year in the 60s. So flash forward 60 years, how many songs do you think were released this past year? 500, what? 500,000? That's a great guess, okay? Anyone else? 
Online, just shout it out. <laughs> You're wrong. Okay. Um, all right, this is interesting. So I'll just, I'll just tell you. Um, so in 2022, an estimated 100,000 songs were released every day. So in perspective, okay, uh, if the songs averaged out to about three minutes each, which is probably conservative, then it would take you about three, I'm sorry, 30 years to listen to all the music that was released yesterday. That's a lot of music. <laughs> Apple Music has over 100 million songs in their library. And for some reason, it keeps playing the same ones over and over in mine. <laughs> music and singing is part of our culture. Some of you probably remember way back before I was even born how in social gatherings that weren't religious in nature, someone may have just started singing and everyone just joined in because it was kind of what you did. It's how you expressed yourself. Now, similarly, singing has been part of God's creation, God's family for thousands of years. So the earliest song recorded in the scripture was in Exodus chapter 15. And it was sung right after they were, you know, released from captivity. And so here's just a couple of those verses uh, from verse 1 and, um, and 10. It says, I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. And then a little later in verse 10, um, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. I love that. That's very vivid and graphic, isn't it? Now, the last song is found in Revelation 15. Revelation 15. And what's interesting is that the first song was about God's victory over evil. It was a song of Moses. The last song in Scripture, in Revelation 15, is about God's victory over evil. And it's a song of Moses. Interesting. This is what a couple of those passages, uh, verses say. And I saw what looked like a sea of glass glowing with fire and standing beside the sea, those who had been victorious over the beast and its image and over the number of its name. They held harps given them by God and sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. And I don't know what the tune was or is going to be. It's going to be interesting. But it says, Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways king of the nations who will not fear you lord and bring glory to your name for you alone are holy all nations will come and worship before you for your righteous acts have been revealed now in between these two songs in scripture are about 185 other songs 80 percent of those are psalms now there are others like the song of solomon which some people don't want to sing in mixed company. There's Lamentations, and it's really five dirges. There's songs that are deeply, I would say, guttural, emotional. You know, the people of God had their hymnal. Uh, every church, every congregation has its own hymnal, really. It's their library of songs that evolved throughout the years. And we have one too, and it's, and it's changing. It, it consistently changes. Jeff shared with me uh, that last year we sang 319 different songs. All right? And 14 of those were brand new songs. Some of you are like, only 14? Right? Now, it may be brand new to you, but it's not necessarily brand new to our church, our congregation. But we sang 14 brand new songs last year. And there was a three-way tie for the songs we sang the most. All right? Uh, Great Things, Hymn of Heaven, and Raise a Hallelujah. We, we sang those five times each. What I love about Jeff and, and th this team is they put so much thought and prayer and study into the songs that we sing on Sunday morning. Now, our hope is that we can help facilitate an opportunity for each one of you to express gratitude and praise and prayer and God's comfort and joy, even, even express our pain and suffering. 
You know, it's really hard for me to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord. It's really hard. Especially that, that verse that says, you give and take away. For some reason, that hits me. Whenever we sing songs that are repetitive that say, you know, you are good, it gets me. It's hard for me to make it through those. You know, the Psalms include all of these things. They include all these emotions, and they, they include all these. They also include songs of anticipation. You may even see this as you look through the Psalms. It'll say, songs of ascent. And what that is, is that's a song that they would sing as they're going up to Jerusalem, to the Temple Mount, because it's on a mount. So they're singing as they go up. Imagine, imagine people who are walking, singing on their way to church. We can barely get some of you to sing in church. And imagine, greeters, imagine if people were coming into the doors singing loudly. Wouldn't that be awesome? Why don't y'all start, and then maybe they'll join you. <laughs> Uncomfortable laughter. Okay. <laughs> King David was one of the most prolific songwriters. He wrote about 73 of the Psalms, and it says he was a man after God's own heart. Of course, we all know nobody's perfect. David had his demons, right? He had those things that he really struggled with. And the most tragic was how he managed to take another man's wife probably by force we don't know but he took Bathsheba and then he tried to cover up his sin and killed her husband now the Jewish Talmud says this is interesting it says that David one of the ways David was punished for his sin was that he was deprived of his music for 10 years I don't know how true that is but if it were Man, how tragic. I mean, David, you know, he expressed himself through his music and being deprived of that. Some of you love to sing. Imagine your voice just gone. But even in his darkest moments, David knew why he sang. Do we know why we sing? Why do we sing? When we walk through these doors, there's this expectation that we're probably going to sing this morning. If we didn't, we'd probably hear about it. If we sing too many songs, we're probably going to hear about it. If we sing songs that you not necessarily like, we're probably going to hear about it. If we sing songs you love, we're going to hear about it. Why do we sing? Do we sing this because it's what we've always done? Do we, do we sing because we're genuinely thankful? I mean, is our singing really an expression of our worship to God? Now, I know some people will determine the value or worth of a church based on the music or how a particular, um, how their particular music service, you know, goes or even makes them feel. And by, by the way, I'm just going to go and put this out there. I absolutely love the way we sing. I think there's something truly organic and beautiful about a cappella singing. In fact, um, there was one of my friends, he's, he preaches over at Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, John Pope. He came in one Wednesday night, you know, and, and he was going to be talking to us about something, but he spent the whole first 10 minutes, some of you who were there remember this, he was so moved by our music and how we sang together. He was so moved, tears were just flowing. And I remember a couple times he shouted, Hallelujah! He goes, is it okay if I shout hallelujah? He shouted it because it moved him so much. I love the way we sing. I love this idea of a cappella. It's rich in beauty. It's rich in history. It's sacred and it's meaningful to hear the people of God singing with one voice. Now the argument over whether or not there were instruments or should be instruments in worship has been going on for centuries. It's not a new argument. And probably because the answer is not really that clear in scripture now the conversation i think is good at least it can be good but if we limit the conversation to an either or outcome then i think we're dumbing down the whole conversation into one of of preference or even fear maybe and we don't need to be afraid and we don't need to focus so much on our preferences i was talking to a, a visitor at a church a while back it wasn't here 
But they said, you know, they said, I'm gonna, we're going to start going to another church because uh, we really want to feel the Spirit during worship. And we, didn't really, we don't really feel it here at this a cappella service. And I remember just sitting there thinking, wow, what, what are you not doing? Are you not hearing the same thing I'm hearing? And then I wonder if we haven't reduced the answer to the question of why we sing to a matter of feeling or preference. I mean, granted, singing is cathartic, you know. It, it's emotional. It brings up things that even this morning whenever Clint you're just reading those words and I'm like wow that's it that's why we meet it's cathartic sometimes it's emotional but it's feeling good the expectation about why we sing and can we still praise God with our voices, without this overwhelming, overwhelming feeling or emotion. And I can tell you certain points in my life, the last thing I want to do when I come to church is sing. Of course, in those moments, you become very aware that it's really the Holy Spirit's song. I mean, what a genuine expression of gratitude self-awareness understanding whenever God's people sing with all they have even if they may not feel anything and I do wonder if if singing in church these days has the potential to become just another way of gratifying ourself you know we look for song services that make us feel good of course, we wouldn't say that. We would say that we're looking for a, a worship service that helps us feel the Spirit. But I think this is important to remember, and that is this, that fe if feeling good is the expectation of worship, I don't think it's about God anymore. If feeling good is the expectation of worship, then it's not about God anymore, it's about us. So why do we sing then? it's more than just a feeling there's a lot of reasons but I've kind of narrowed it down to three for our conversation this morning let me, let me just go through those I think that we sing in order to participate see when we come together to sing the focus is no longer on the individual we're now part of a group we're part of a family we're part of the body of Christ you know, we have a lot of people who continue to watch us online every week, and so we have several people on stage so that those people at home know that they're not just singing alone or with one person. They're singing together with the body of Christ. They're singing with God's church. Focus isn't on our lead worshiper. The focus isn't on me. The focus isn't on you. The focus is, is on our communal praise to God. You know, we sing together, and what we're doing is we're practicing mutual submission. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Sometimes it's just the men singing, sometimes it's just the women. Different parts take turns. There's some syncopation where you have to pay attention, because if you're not used to it, you've got to really watch and, and listen. We take turns, and what happens is we get music that is the sound of our family of this particular body of believers. We're singing for each other. We're singing with each other. We're knowing that when each of these parts come together, they form a sound that is unique to Johnson Street, the voice of our church. One voice, give and take, joining together. It's encouragement and it's empathy and it's love, really, to join someone, even me, when you don't feel like it. It's what Paul says in Romans 15, 5 and 6. He says, may the God who, give you, who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had. So that, I love that phrase, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
when we sing half-heartedly or not at all or just hoping to feel good, we're limiting the potential of our collective voice and our individual one. And I think in some ways we could be limiting the power of God's Holy Spirit here. So my encouragement is sing, whether you're good at it or not. Sing with all you have. Let God do His work in you. When you speak the Word of God, when you sing the Word of God, it's going to go out. It will not return empty-handed. We also sing to remember. Uh, Now, as children, we sing to help us remember basic facts, knowledge, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. How many of you thought L, M, and P was one letter for the longest time? (laughs) Good, not just me. Okay. Um, we, We sing to remember, you know, we learn common truths, biblical principles, schoolhouse rock. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and... There you go. Mark Davis for the win. That's true, though. We remember, you know, Schoolhouse Rock, Conjunction, Junction. Yeah, for some reason, we remember these things. We learn, you know, through that music. Um, here, here's, here's a video of a kid who's just, he learns the, the, you know, books of the New Testament. It's just great. Let's just watch this. Turn it up just a little bit. John Acts 2, lesson to the Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, First and second and third John, Jude and Revelation. All my exes live in Texas, and Texas is a place that I dearly love to be. But I. Oh my goodness, that's one of my favorites. Sometimes we may mix up some things that are true. (laughs) Oh my gosh. You know, music has the potential to teach us some things, and sometimes it it teaches us some things we may not even realize we're learning, you know? Some music, it's so interesting. Music actually wires our brains in particular ways. And this is what I found out, and I don't know how true it is, but, you know, research is research, right? Uh, It says that whenever a memory or a thought is attached to a song or a piece of music it acts like quick transportation it's almost like you know somebody gets into a high-powered vehicle that can go really fast whenever a memory or thought is attached to a song it acts as quick transportation it helps the memory to move more quickly from one point to another it's fascinating so my question is as a church family what are we choosing to remember together What are we remembering through our singing? Colossians 3.16 says, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Are we remembering the message of Christ? Is it dwelling among us? I mean, is that what fills our songs? Is that what fills our teaching? That's why I think theology is highly important whenever we, whenever we sing. You know, each song has a theology behind it. Do we pay attention to the theology that we're singing? You know, what we sing really is important. Psalm 78 gives us a reason why Israel chose to remember through their song Song, Psalm 78 says my people hear my teaching this is just a selection of a couple of these I will utter hidden things things our ancestors have told us we will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord his power and the wonders he has done so the next generation would know them even the children yet to be born and they in turn would tell their children 
I love it because they sang to remember. They also sang so they wouldn't forget. We're doing the same thing. When we sing to remember God's love for us, the story of his love for us, you know, we're also choosing to remember that he is not going to forsake us. We don't ever need to forget that. We're choosing to remember that he conquered the power of sin and death. Don't forget that. We are singing to remember the gospel that has been told to us through the stories, those eyewitnesses that were there, the people who, who know good and well that Jesus has come to rescue us. And in turn, we get to pledge our lives to him because nothing that we would ever be able to do with our lives could even remotely compare to the plan that God has for his people. We sing to remember. We sing so our children will never forget. We sing so that our children's children will never forget. We also sing to express ourselves. We sing to express our allegiance. We sing to express our loyalty. We sing to express our, our love, our gratitude, our hearts. And I think whenever we make participating and remembering together a priority and a way of life, we eventually get to that place when we can become more creative in what we sing, how we sing. Now the Psalm, in, uh, Psalm 96, it says this, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. Now granted, new songs are sometimes difficult to learn. I get that. Especially if we only have Sunday mornings to teach them. You know, uh, this fifth Sunday singing is kind of fun because you're learning new songs together and you're kind of messing up and, you know, and we kind of laugh and and it's fun but we're learning these songs together so on Sunday mornings I would just encourage you don't put off a song you may not necessarily know because it's not a good old hymn don't put off a song you may not necessarily know because you know it's a hymn you have never heard since we're approaching this place as we talked about last week approaching scripture as a learner and not as a knower what if we approached our our worship as a learner as well you know we're approaching this place as learners so let's be open to learning new songs i believe that the spirit wants to help us express ourselves in new ways to god and to one another did you know that the spirit's helping you the spirit's inside if you've chosen to believe if you put on christ baptism and faith and you're all in the spirit is helping you and expressing itself through you. Ephesians 5, 8, 9, 18 through 19. Be filled with the Spirit, it says. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's a theologian named Zwingli, old, long time ago. And he was really trying to parse scripture and this is one of those things one of those scriptures he he really hung on you know and it says oh sing and make music from your heart to the lord that means we have to we can't sing out loud we have to be silent so if you were to go into a zwingli church the song service would have sounded like this a little odd The larger context here is that when we allow the Spirit to fill us, singing because some, becomes something that flows out of us and it becomes less of something we kind of have to do. It's less of a thing we have to get through to what we really want to hear, which is communion or, or the sermon or, or lunch. When you let the Spirit fill you, it's going to express Himself through you. Through the Spirit, God is helping us also to express ourselves. And there is music in God's Spirit. It's at the very core of who He is. Look at nature. Even to the wolves that howl. Just listen to space 
and the sounds of the universe to the sounds that are at the, the depth of the oceans. Even those invisible waves of electricity and magnetism and radiation, we can't hear, but they're making noise. Revelation describes for us the singing and how beautiful and I would say in some, not in the scary, terrifying way, but the, the, the awe-filled way that it's going to sound and how music surrounds God's throne. God is musical and it's one way he expresses his love to us. So do we do the same? Imagine if the only way you could express love to your significant other is with music or singing. How would your song sound through your current context? Y'all can do that later. Y'all can don't have to do it right now. <laughs> do we express our love to God through our singing? And what are we teaching our kids about why and how we sing? Are we teaching our kids, spending so much time teaching our kids about what's wrong with what other people do at other churches? Are we teaching our kids what's wrong about singing? I would say, just stop that. Teach your children what's good about it. What you focus on, you're going to get more of. So focus on what's ever pure and holy and right and good. Because music and singing, it's good. Even though you may not be able to carry a tune, it's still good. We have some people in this room who sing with all their, their hearts. And, and granted, they, they, they may not be on tune, but man, it's a blessing to me. If you want to hear how good singing is, sit next to Callie Creed. You'll be blessed. I could, I could go on too, because I'm in the front. I hear people. Singing. Music is good because it's, it's really the way of God. Now, we may need to repent a little bit about why and how we've sung, but I'm encouraging you to be a people who choose to sing, and not only just choose to, but, but you decide right now, I'm going to choose to love singing together with God's people. So my encouragement is let's be a people who sing with all we have because it's basic to our faith. I'll close with this. Isaiah 12, 5 says this, Sing to the Lord. Why? For he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Singing is basic to our faith because it gives us an opportunity to share the world just how good and glorious God is. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this day Help us to be encouraged by the words that are spoken today. And I pray that you would just help this message to resonate with us. Lord, help us to be people who are all in. And at the least, Lord, help us to be grateful for the voices that you have given us and the opportunity that we can sing in the open, in our culture, without fear. We can be people who boldly declare the love of God through the music you have given us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need prayer, if you need to repent for any reason, if you need to know who Christ is and what this whole thing is about, where are men and women around the room? We would love to talk with you. The water is warm. We would love the opportunity to show you a better way. Let's stand together and, and sing. Oh